Okay, hello, good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar, Empower Teams to Deliver Customer Experiences. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about how you can learn to improve the effectiveness of your contact center and also chatbots with artificial intelligence. Uh, before we start, just a couple of ground rules. Um, you know, we really want you guys to have the best experience today. So if you could please mute yourself throughout the webinar, it, that would be best. Um, if you want to have the best viewing experience, we suggest you use full screen for your video so you can see our slides and our lovely presenters' faces. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to put them in the chat window or the Q&A tools that we use in the right-hand corner of the, um, of the, the video box. We will be recording the session for our records. Uh, to give you an overview of who you're gonna be talking to today, first, my name is Mario. I'm a sales manager here at GoPomelo, and I'll be handling kind of the overview and, and running things in terms of the MC perspective for um, today's webinar. And joining me will be our senior customer engineer, William Mitchell. William's gonna walk us through some demos and show us some really cool technologies around uh, chatbots and also con cloud contact centers and give you guys a, a really good overview of how things work on the inside of these really amazing technologies. Our agenda is five parts today. Well, actually really six parts. First, I'm gonna give you guys an overview about you know, how you can use um, different channels to connect to your customers and then how they connect those systems to your internal platforms with artificial intelligence. Uh, we'll then have a short demo uh, showing you some of those capabilities within a, a product we use and, and a partner of ours called Twilio. Next, we'll do a session on chatbots, and I'll give you an overview of kind of how chatbots, um, you know, work and also how, you know, some of the technologies that we leverage. And then William will take over and do another demo there. We'll round out today's agenda with some customer success stories. And then at the end, if you guys have any questions, we're going to leave some time for, you know, discussion and, and any questions you may have. As I mentioned before, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, just throw them in the chat box and then we'll be happy to uh, discuss them at the end. So here we go. Just before we start, I'll give you a quick introduction about GoPomelo. For those of you who may or may not know us, um, we want to just give you guys a high level of, of who we are and what we do. So we are a cloud first company. We really have focused on cloud technologies since before cloud was even a thing. Um, we really believe the power of cloud and, and how it can help to drive technology transformation, business and culture transformation for our customers, but also for their customers. Um, we think cloud is really the transformative technology and can be applied to many different businesses. We've been um, a partner of Google since 2012. Um, we've and over that time, you know, we've amassed a lot of specialization expertise in certain areas like application development, um, infrastructure, work transformation. Um, these certifications and specializations we have from Google are basically showing that Google, you know, Google gives us the the approval to develop these solutions for our customers and deploy them for some of the largest customers in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, we were nominated as a partner of the year in 2020 by Google. And we service customers in five countries. Our headquarters is here in Bangkok. That's where William and I are sitting today. But we have you know, offices in Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Ho Chi Minh, and Hong Kong, and staff there supporting our, our customers in those different territories. We're at about 100 people right now, with most of those being focused on technical consultants to really drive these solutions and make sure that you have the best in class um, uh, solutions on cloud. We are also part of the Digital China Group, and we help to leverage, uh, help to support their customers outside of Greater China as well. We have a lot of different customers in different verticals as well. Um, we like to put this slide or you know highlight this in the beginning of our presentations. One to highlight that cloud can be used by any type of business, large, small, uh, medium size, but also any type of vertical. We really feel that cloud technologies can be. Um, utilized by every business type, whether that's a bank, uh, whether that's a manufacturer, whether it's an internet company, obviously, or you know, a logistics company, um, it could be a restaurant chain, whatever it is. We really feel that there's value and, and potential um, you know, things that people can leverage in cloud for every type of business. Um, so you you probably know a lot of these logos if you're you know familiar with the Asia Pacific business climate. But you know, we also work with a lots of other customers and other businesses as well, um, small and medium as well. At GoPomelo, we focus on six kind of key transformation workloads. 
Starting from left to right, we look at digital employee experience. Now this is more providing collaboration tools for employees inside of an organization, but also providing you know, the best experience for users when they're working in, a, in an environment. These are things like you know, uh, chat solutions, email and collaboration solutions, um, you know, video, video calling, voice calling, things like that. Um, next is really our focus for today, which is communications and AI. We group communications at AI as a lot of different technologies. A couple of the key ones that we're going to talk about today, obviously, are chatbots and cloud contact centers. But also, that you know, that's machine learning, that's artificial intelligence, that's natural language processing, and that will be the main focus of the technologies we discuss today. But we also do other things outside of that, right? On cloud, we we do a, we work with a lot of customers to provide you know advanced data and analytics, help them leverage the power of cloud, um, you know, to get the most out of their data. We also work with customers to uh, modernize their applications. Now, this is also one of those kind of broad categories, right? This is could mean developing new applications on the cloud for customers. This could be replatforming or bringing old applications to the cloud to help them leverage the scale. Or it could be a combination of those things and helping customers to kind of leverage on-premise hybrid type cloud architectures um, with the best in breed and data and, and infrastructure and security as well. We help a lot of customers with managed services as well. And a big focus of GoPomelo is this year and next year is to become a managed service provider on Google Cloud Platform, a certified managed service provider, excuse me. So we help our customers now kind of as their in-house IT team for cloud, right? To provision cloud resources, to manage security and users, things like that. So that's another large part of our business and focus. And then finally, we do work with a lot of customers in location intelligence. Almost every single piece of data that is collected on a mobile app or on a website has some location component to it. And it is a very underutilized piece of information that businesses could, could take advantage of. And we work with customers to help them integrate that data into their overall data strategies and make the best out of it. That was a quick overview of GoPomelo. And now I'd like to go into the first topic of today's um, agenda, which is you know, how do you contact your customers on their favorite channels? and then integrate that con that connection with your internal platforms. Now, I'm going to start with a brief overview of kind of some of the, the market trends, what we've seen, and then we'll go into some more specific technologies. Now, the big buzzword that a lot of people are talking about right now is digital transformation. And ever since the pandemic started, digital transformation, you hear it everywhere. It's on business news, it's in, on the web, it's everywhere, right? Um, digital transformation means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But essentially what it is from our perspective is helping customers to, you know, interact, helping businesses to interact with their customers, helping customers to reach out to businesses through different channels, but also providing the tools for businesses and customers to be able to connect with each other in a collaborative way, but also in an efficient and cost, of, uh, cost effective way as well. Um, some of the statistics you'll see here came from one of our partners, Twilio, who we'll talk about later and who William will give you guys a deep overview on. Um, basically, you know, COVID, as we all know, and I'm sure a lot of you experienced this, when COVID first hit, um, a lot of companies were kind of forced to, you know, set up a lot of tools that they never had before. You know, things specifically like, you know, video calling, um, chat services, things like that. Things that people maybe weren't using were forced to kind of use that because one, they weren't able to go into the office or also they maybe had to close their stores. So customers still had to find ways to interact with them. They still had to find a way to sell their products. So they had to go digital, right? So COVID-19 definitely increased that, um, that need for digital transformation and sped that up and accelerated that. Um, and then basically, you know, within a month, most companies have now embedded digital transformation in their corporate strategies moving forward. And huge budgets are being expended now and allocated for digital transformation since COVID-19. And I think a lot of that is going to stay because most people now understand that, yes, while the pandemic has been very uh, stressful for people and has been very, you know, kind of um, hard on businesses, business can go on and life is going on, which is a great thing now. We're kind of getting out of the end of the pandemic. Um, but the budgets that required to keep customers connected, keep employees connected, will stay in place. Even with all that investment, though, you know, most customers are still having a lot of trouble engaging with businesses on digital channels. A lot of businesses that weren't invested in things like uh, customer resource management software, uh, you know, different types of tools in terms of chat, in terms of video calling, um, huge expenditures, but still a lot of consumers don't feel that they're being uh, provided for or serviced correctly. Um, a lot of consumers still don't feel that they have excellent customer service on digital channels. And actually, you know, since the pandemic, some customers even feel it's not easy to communicate with the brands that they want to because of uh, COVID. 
So these are still challenges that a lot of businesses are facing, even with all these increased budgets um, and increased focus on digital. So the focus has to be on engagement, not just communication. But those are challenges, obviously, right? First, from the business perspective, you have to look at how do you scale these things, right? How do you understand where the channels are that your customers are engaging you with? Are your customers speaking to you on Facebook Messenger? Um, do some of your customers prefer emails? Do some want to use the call center and actually call into a call center and speak to someone, right? These are different things that you have to keep up with and, and manage, right? And while you're doing that, even if you're opening new channels, how do you make sure that it's a seamless experience, right? Um, a big challenge that customers have and businesses have is managing an online and offline type of relationship. So maybe you buy something online, but then maybe you're still visiting a storefront to pick it up and maybe the information from your order is incorrect, things like that because you placed it on a different channel or it didn't go into the main system. These are all kind of challenges that you have to manage in terms of a seamless experience between those different endpoints. And then also, it's got to move fast. I mean, obviously, as we saw, right, because of COVID, people were expecting to move online very quickly. And that's continuing, right? New platforms are emerging every day. Um, new technologies are emerging every day. And different generations have different preferences as well, right? Younger generations will, you know, the TikToks, the kind of these different things, while other generations will prefer something more traditional, maybe like an SMS or an email or even calling into a call center. So managing that scale, managing the different preferences, but also managing the expectations is super challenging. And all of that combined with, you have to make sure that you're compliant with global regulations, with compliance, things like that. Because you know it's super important to meet your customers where you're at, but you still have to offer them security and make sure that if you're doing you know, business transactions, you know, doing anything in finance, doing any kind of e-commerce, those type of things, anything with personal data, you have to ensure that your customer's data is secure. If you miss any of these things, right, it gives a very poor customer experience, right? So for example, if you uh, submit an order on one channel and it doesn't get through, you know, you could be missing information. This could be, you know, renewal information. Maybe you have to renew your insurance policy. You got the email, but you didn't respond to the text, something like that, right? Another kind of thing that's a poor experience for customers is getting the same things over and over again, getting spammed. You know, even if you opt out of certain things, maybe you opt out on an email, but they still keep sending you SMSs, things like that. So that's another aspect that businesses have to manage and balance. Another thing that customers are really keen to is feel like they're a human, right? They don't want to just feel like they're part of an, uh, you know, a transaction. Well, yes, everyone knows business is based on transactions and, you know, trading goods for services, things like that. You still want to be able to engage them and be personal on that. And if you can't do that, then your customers are going to lose trust in your business. So a lot of things to balance, a lot of things to, um, to manage as we scale out digital, as the new focus comes on digital transformation. And you really have to do three key things here to be making sure you are engaging with your customers and building a customer engagement platform. One, you need to have access to real-time data. This is super important now because everything's moving so fast. And if you don't, if you aren't able to track your customer's journey from you know point A to point B in a very real-time or near real-time way, you're going to miss something, and that's going to impact the customer performance or customer experience. Excuse me. With that real-time data, though, comes other challenges, right? Your teams have to be able to track that, right? So internally, those teams have to be able to see all the different channels, have to be able to make decisions, have good insights, and have to be able to, knowledgeable to be able to leverage the tools and data correctly. Um, and if they're doing that correctly, then they will be engaging the customers on the right channels, right? Maybe William likes to, you know, talk to company A on WhatsApp. Maybe I prefer Facebook. You need to be able to build those customer profiles so that you can manage those different expectations and engage with them and really have good business impacts for you and your customers. The key technology that we help customers use to, to leverage all these requirements and really scale up on digital is Twilio. So Twilio is a customer engagement platform and it does all kind of those key things that I mentioned, right? It gives you data-driven communications across multiple channels, so it allows you to scale on email, on voice, on video calling, on chats, all in one, all in one central platform. It also provides that base layer where all the customers can see, um, or all the all your customers and also all your employees can see what's happening with your customers. It has tons of tools. It's super powerful in terms of being able to, you know, create applications, uh, create different workflows at scale uh, to be able to help your customers and be specific and customized by regions as well. 
And because it is a platform and because it's cloud-based, uh, you know, you really have to make sure that there's security and compliance in place. And Twilio has all those key factors to make sure that one, you're scaling your business effectively, your customers are happy, and also data and everything is secure. As I mentioned, it is a platform. And if you look at it from a, a customer engagement or a customer journey perspective, you can leverage Twilio at almost every stage of the customer journey from, you know, customer acquisition, lead conversion, uh, you know, building customer loyalty, providing field service and sales to them, you know, doing identity and, and verification, verification with them as well. Across marketing, service, and operations, Twilio has the platform and the tools to allow you to, you know, give that unified data, have that seamless journey, and then built in trust for, for not just application developers, but for your customers. The customer engagement platform for Twilio is built on three kind of key layers. First being the channels, right? I think we managed mentioned those a couple of times now. Messaging, uh, voice, email, video calling, right? Allowing you to, to use those channels and understand which channels are best for which customer. In the middle, there, there's the apps themselves, right? So the actual services that you know you can connect to those channels and then integrate with your backend systems, your CRM, um, your logistics providers platform, your different analytics and, and you know marketing tools as well. Those are the layer that also allows you to be pers do personalization, right? To build those campaigns, those marketing campaigns in your CRM or in your customer data platform and then allowing it to extend outward from the bottom up to those different channels to engage with your different customers. So that's at a very holistic level. The next slide really shows kind of in more detail what does that mean, right? The Twilio platform itself has many different components and you know, I'm not gonna go into this, I'll let William kind of walk through some of these things for you. But essentially, you look at it as a perspective of a, a wide set of tools for developers, for the business users to be able to connect to be able to ingest data, to be able to analyze data, artificial intelligence where you can then, you know, help to predict outcomes to, you know, better respond to customer inquiries, and then also to do the routing of all of the different messages and the different tools to your customers. So that's very high level in terms of the tools and, you know, the things you need to be able to engage your customers on the correct channels. What I'll do now is I'll pass over to William and he's going to give you guys a more detailed walkthrough and then also give you a demo on how powerful Twilio is. So I'll pass over to William now. William, over to you. Okay, thanks Mario for that. And um, so, yeah, so that's a great intro to Twilio and I, and I think I'll just linger on this slide just a little bit longer. I mean, what's interesting about this slide is it really shows you how many different things Twilio can do. So you see this channel APIs that are across the bottom. Um, really, these are all the different ways that your business and your customers might want to interface with you. And this is where Twilio adds that flexibility to that. But if you go up into these red boxes, you can see that there's a number of interfaces, whether it's the AI ML interface, the different workflow and routers, and the omni-channel. So what I want to do is share an architecture slide with you guys. And um, I think I'm going to present now. So. Yeah, so let me, let me just take over the presentation. I will go to our next slide. Okay, here we are. Okay, so um, let's just say, let's start out with a, a, a story of a, of a customer, okay? So let's say that we have a customer who is uh, in the food and cake business, okay? What you're looking at here is kind of a, a, a full solution with Twilio in place against the channels. And we also have, as Mario will talk about later, some conversation uh, chatbot and dialogue flow components for our context center AI. But for this part of the for this part of the topic, let's just tell the story of let's say we're we have a business and they have um, they do food food orders and they have a number of agents standing by to take take these orders or order. Uh, listen to these phone calls. We also have cake orders. Like, so think of it as your custom cakes, the decoration on the cakes. So, so we have a team of support callers, uh, our, our, our second support callers. And then finally, let's say we also have um, a group that handles, let's say, the vendor deal, vendor sides of things. So the idea here would be, let's say we have an agent, uh, you know, you're, you're a reseller of our cakes and we, you have an account problem and you want to talk to a technical support. So taking orders from the food division, taking orders from the cake division, 
your technical support. So these are this is the use case story of our businesses back end. You know, we're we're a food and cake provider for other restaurants and businesses. Now our customers might want to talk to us in a number of different channels. Maybe they want to call on the phone. Maybe they want to use um, line calling. They can connect to our I IVR contact, and they can also talk to us by all the chat. Uh, and social media that we all are used to talking in. So I think what, what's interesting here about Twilio is we'll walk you through kind of a workflow of how Twilio is very powerful. And again, this is just one of those features of Twilio. So let's say that, for example, when a call comes in, we might want to set up some kind of task router, some kind of menu for our callers. And, and depending on how our callers respond, they'll go to different agents and they can handle different sides of the business. But also, that workflow for each of those agents might connect to some back-end systems via APIs. So we'll walk you through a bit of that uh, architecture here, and we'll focus on just these components for this, first, for this first round. So let's say there's a member calling in, and they want to place an order and interact with us. So now, let's go behind the covers a little bit in Twilio. So let's think of this call. So a caller is going to call in, and that caller will say, hey, you know, I." I I want, I want a menu for three different services. One will be for the food service, one will be for the cake service, and one for, be, for general support. So what we want to do with Twilio is we want to route that call to whichever agent might be available. And if you go back to the diagram, you notice that we have three agents. We might also have agents that, we may have five agents for each of the support classes. Say one of the agents is sick one day. Twilio can set up that your agents can rotate through the schedule and only route the calls to the agents that are available. So this is another back-end system that you can manage. So the other thing is you can fully customize those menus, and we'll go into the demo to show you some of this. And then from there, each of the different channels that we route your information to, additionally, you can start tracking metrics, analytics on, on your call, on your usage, on your customer requests. You can even extend this platform, and we'll talk about some of those dialogue flow things in the next section. But let's just focus on this IVR call flow role of Twilio right now. And I'm going to kind of jump into demo mode to sort of, to sort of show this to you. So first of all, I'm going to switch over to the Twilio console. And I think what's interesting about this part of the demo, too, is I want to show you how, how really user-friendly Twilio has made all of this. Like, it seems very complex on the back end, but once you get your engineers um, uh, or your project uh, set up, it's very easy to scale this and change it as your business changes over time. So let's start out with the idea of um, we're going to have that phone call from the, uh, from the existing system, right? So let's take a look at that, how that product looks like. So we're going to jump here into the Explore products. And wait a moment as that connects. Uh, you can also just search for studio. I'm just going to search for the studio up in the search bar. Okay, so now I've got our projects that we have saved below. And just while that loads. And so what we're going to show you here is that behind the scene workflow for how this call center works. So I'm going to open up this test IVR test flow. And so now you'll see that the live version of that slide I showed that, that, that shows the script and the way the workflow works. So again, here, here's, our, here's our incoming call item. So if I zoom in on this a little bit, you can see that there's, these are different triggers that you, you can use. You can have it as an incoming message, as an incoming call, as an API call. So you can connect it in a number of different ways. But let's just focus on incoming call. So the call we're calling, and that call will go into this router. And this is the in introduction. So I'm going to click on this and just show you guys. This will be a text-to-speech tool that we can actually have the initial message for the caller. So let's put this here. And so it's initially set up like our case study we said is, Hi, how can we direct your call? Press 1 for food ordering, press 2 for cake ordering, or press 3 for contact support for your supplier account. Okay, so that will actually be the voice message that goes to our customers. And then the, the next step from there is once that menu split happens, and you see there's a menu object here, we can split that into the three different systems. But notice here there's also other, other routes that you can take in more advanced cases where you can connect to systems and a number of things. But right now we're just going to talk about the call routing part. So let's jump into the de demo quickly, and I'll kind of show you how it works. So let's imagine I want to call up and order a cake, right? So I'm going to go to my phone, and I'm going to grab the, uh, the phone number for calling 
the, the cake business, right? Williams cake business. And I'll call, uh, I'll just grab that number here. So imagine this is my cell phone that I'm calling on. And you guys will kind of hear that menu come back to us. So we'll make the call. Hello, how can we direct your call? Press one for food ordering. Press two for our cake ordering or press three for contact support for your supplier account. All right, so here, here it is. I, I, I can press two for this. And then that's going to ring us over to our contact agent. Okay, so you can see that that was the same script that came through. The other thing that's interesting about this, if you take a look back to the, the routing, um, let's say, for example, we wanted to add a third uh, line, or say we had a different, they'd say it's not cakes, or a cake business just becomes a bakery business. You, know, you can easily just change this, this text to be bakery, and, and then maybe you want to add another channel. You know, you can add a, a fourth, fourth option to this, okay? So we change this router here to say bakery, and we save that, and we can publish this. And then when we call back on our phone number, you can see it will easily connect and route just as we did last time, except this time it'll say bakery. Hello, how can we direct your call? Press one for food ordering. Press two for our bakery ordering or press three for contact support for your supplier account. So, so, I mean, you can see it's a simple example, but it's very simple to customize these menus. And then once, once that is, now this could also be the user says something or no input at all. So you could actually speak to and have that, have that work as well. So you see there's a number of ways that Twilio integration, now what makes this powerful is when you, when you zoom out on this, now you see that this is a whole uh, workflow system that's linked to any user's call. It's linked to as many, say at the beginning you only have three, three agents um, working, one for cakes, one for food, and one for support. Maybe your business scales to other countries and you want to have local language support in other countries. Or maybe your, your business is just scaling where you want 10 agents handling orders for food and 10 agents handling orders for cakes. You have a whole staff of agents. Well, Twilio can intelligently route the calls to the avail available agent pools. And then each agent just gets those instructions for their subtask. And we can keep building on this kind of menu system or you can even use actual voice recordings. Right, so th there's a lot of flexibility here. And this is just a simple, simple demo to give you a bit of a feel of um, how that phone integration works. So I will go back to the uh, slide deck. And I just want to kind of go back to the architecture again. So again, just to summarize this, the idea here is Twilio is a full-on task router, not just for your channel of incoming data, but also for uh, intelligent routing to your downstream systems. One of the downstream systems we focused on today was agents, but in later examples, we'll show you how you can also route that through to a chat bot or a voice bot that'll actually handle some of those agent tasks automatically. So Twilio becomes part of your extended contact center. Now, the other thing that's very important to, to focus on with the, the, Twilio, the Twilio side of things is the reporting and analytics that comes out of it. So now what happens is because all of these uh, components in the architecture are kind of like endpoints, so you have which channel the user called from, which menu items the user picked, which topics did the, did the user um, want to have. We can even put extensions on that with um, uh, voice and sentiment analysis. A number of other things can expand in this. Each of those contact points can be collected into a central data store. And now you can ask questions on your month-to-month -month usage of how many conversations did we handle? How many uh, conversations were handled with an order? You know, what's our top sales channel? What's our top product? So starting to collect these uh, insights from your data, not only is it just based on pure reporting, but it also can be AI driven. So you can start doing some predictive analysis on some of these things where you can have analysis of which users, what types of calls, uh, where did the conversations drop off, did somebody hang up? So you start to get a really deep idea of how to drive your business from these uh, collected, collected uh, statistics. Uh, and finally, the visualization of these statistics help for you to understand your, your business in a snapshot, and it also helps drive your future growth and your fu future business.
positioning. Say we wanted to move into after, I mean, think about a lot of the popular apps we use. They all started out very simply. Think of a lot of our delivery apps started out as simply a driving, a driving app. Now they do delivery. Now they offer shopping services. When you start seeing how those businesses will scale their services, um, this is where Twilio can be a huge part of your business as you go into new markets. The tool just keeps extending. So uh, I think uh, finally you can have your um, you can have your full on customer satisfaction reports in this too with waiting time, talking time. Um, you can do an agent analysis: how well your agents are turning around calls, how how effective the agent is to closing a sale. So there's a number of uses here where all this collected um, reporting can help you even improve your agent agent team. And when Mario takes us into the next section where we start talking about chatbots, we can also see a chatbot strategy that will take some of those tasks away from the agent that are more monotonous and boring, and maybe some that can auto-fulfill by a, by a virtual agent, and then we can save our, our agent's tasks for something that's more useful or more challenging for them. And this way, agent satisfaction is higher. They're not doing as many menial things. We can move them into the chatbot space. So all of these analytics can help drive those decisions. So um, I think I can uh, leave it at that. Oh, finally, there's conversation logging. So just the, the, the last point is because all of these um, components are endpoints, you can actually have an ID for every conversation chain. So if you wanted to say a repeat customer and identify how that customer performs, maybe linking it into your sales force or linking it, linking it into your marketing, all of that's possible as well. So you can start having these conversation um, analytics integrate with your backend systems to help you um, drive your business. And I think of that, uh, I can hand it back over to you, Mark. Great, thanks, William. Yeah, I'll take back over now. Just hold on one second. All right. So yeah, thank you, William. That was really interesting. Um, in terms of the you know key takeaways that I'd like to just highlight from from William's presentation, there is that Twilio provides you with that single pane of glass for all the different channels. You saw from his demo, right? He had he had voice calls, he had chats, he had you know different APIs, right? So lots of different ways for you to interact with customers. Um, as he mentioned, also right, showing you just being able to quickly change some of those responses, some of those things directly in there and, and have an instant kind of um, feedback loop is really important for having direct engagement and quick responses. Um, you know, we just give you a quick glimpse of some of the integrations there, right? Um, focusing on messaging really, but it can really be extended to voice. You know, another big one we're seeing with a lot of our customers is video calling, you know, providing in-app video calling to your different customers. This is really big in insurance right now. Um, it's a really big and also in telehealth as well. Obviously COVID was a big kind of um, impact on that as well. And then finally, what we see is that, you know, if you enable these tools, if you provide these different channels internally, it helps your sales team, it helps your support teams close more business with your customers because they do have that personalized engagement. It's really powerful in, in leveraging that and, and making sure that your business is scaling effectively. So that was kind of an overview of you know how you find your customers on the right channels, how you integrate with AI tools, how do you integrate with backend systems. Now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about chatbots and how you know building a good bot experience can really impact your customer experience and also your customer service organization by allowing that 24/7 support. Uh, and again, we'll start off with kind of a little bit of market overview and some of the things we're seeing and then how some of the Google technologies we provide um, can help you to uh, take advantage of these trends. Um, I think even before COVID, obviously we know that customers are having higher expectations of their brand, right? People, you know, they want to make sure that they're getting value for their money. And as such, they expect a lot of different things. Now, this is something that came out about 2018, 2019, but I think is probably more relevant than ever now. Um, as we're in the days of, you know, large companies like Shopee, like Lazada, like Amazon, being able to buy things 24 hours a day, most customers expect that now, right? Even if you're on like a smaller platform like Facebook uh, Marketplace, something like that, the ability to kind of have automated responses for your customers during off hours is super powerful because it does say with them, hey, all right, these guys are willing to engage with me to you know, even kind of take my inquiry, things like that. 
Another thing that's super important is getting instant responses. I mean, I can speak personally on this. Um, you know, if you if I engage with a brand and I don't get kind of response within you know a certain amount of time, I'm probably not going to engage with that brand anymore. I'm going to go to their competitor. I'm going to you know search for someone else that I know can give me a quicker response. Um, and also some other customers, you know, they don't want to necessarily engage with a person sometimes, right? For very simple, basic inquiries, you know, just give me the information, redirect me to a, the proper link. Um, you know, to, it can be to a website, whatever it is, right? Being able to have simple answers, uh, simple questions to those answers is super important as well. I think another thing that is really important for customers to leverage is um, for, uh, you know, having complaints resolved and having good customer experience, especially on like service requests and things like that. It's really important for maintaining brand loyalty. And it's really important for, you know, ensuring that you have that customer loyalty over time. Um, and to do that, you need to have things resolved quickly. Um, you need to have experts quickly able to, you know, jump into a conversation, right? So even if a bot can't respond to it, the ability to be able to hand it over to a human quickly and smoothly is super important to that. Um, and, you know, these, these expectations aren't going to change. Now, certain customers, you know, expect this. And what we find is that really one of the best ways to, to improve customer experience is using artificial intelligence. And we've learned this from Google. Now, obviously, everyone in this call is familiar with Google, right? The different products they have, their consumer-facing products. AI is everywhere in Google. And you may not realize that AI is in your Google search. It's in your Gmail. It's in your Android place to your Android phone, it's in your Google Play Store. AI is utilized in almost every single product of Google. And as such now, they've just trans they're starting to transition that into services and products that can be leveraged by businesses like yours to give that same level of customization, that same level of you know, smartness to your products as well to kind of wow your customers and give them the best experiences. The key technology that Google uses to provide these experiences in chatbots is called Dialogflow. Uh, Dialogflow is a series and a set of different sec, uh, services and technologies under one kind of umbrella. But generally, what it, the, the main concept is it allows people to build conversational experiences. And when I say conversational experiences, we're meaning, you know, like you're talking to a real person, right? You want the bot to be able to respond in a natural way. Obviously, I'm sure we've all had that experience where we've worked with a bot or we've had to, you know, send, go through a customer service bot. And it's very clear that bot is not trained properly or, you know, it gives you a dead end or it's not able to understand your requirements. So there is a big difference between a chat bot and a naturally rich conversational bot. One of our key focuses at GoPomlo is building these bots for customers that are really, really well suited to different business cases. And there's not just a technology, there's a methodology, there's a practice around that to make sure that those bots are trained correctly, that they learn, that they're responsive, and that they connect to your systems in an efficient way. Now, Dialogflow has, as I mentioned, several components, right? But essentially, the, it's, it's made up of a, cute, a few key components. Firstly, we have to look at it from the perspective of a conversation. Now, this is about methodology. This is not about technology. When we start to engage with a customer who says they want a chat bot, we, we started the business use case. You know, sometimes, you know, a bot may not be suited for a certain use case. It could be better suited by a certain workflow tool or, you know, maybe it's a, a web application, something like that. We look at bots and the interactions with, you know, omni-channel uh, communications from the conversation perspective. Firstly, you know, what, what is the requirement? What is the action that needs to happen? What are the responses that need to happen so that the customer can achieve that action and that the business can fulfill that requirement? So we break it down really from you know, the question, okay, for example, I want a cheese pizza or can I request extra cheese on the pizza, right? We then take that to the bot, is under, train the bot to say, hey, the intent of the customer here is they want to order a pizza with extra cheese. That then has to be translated to an action and a response so that the bot understands, okay, I need to update my ordering system that this person wants extra cheese on two pizzas. And then also make sure that that bot responds effectively once it gets the feedback from the internal system saying, hey, I understood you. I know that you want extra cheese on your two pizzas. I'm gonna give that to you. Can you confirm that for me, right? So this is, you know, this is a workflow, this is a methodology that enables the technology. 
not vice versa. The technology allows us to do these things, but if we don't have the process in place to understand it and really the business understanding of what the customer is trying to achieve, then this doesn't really work. And we've had, you know, we've seen this with customers in the past with, you know, large budgets, putting a lot of funding and, and things into developing bots, but without the kind of methodology in place to do it, they're not successful. So what chatbots do and what dialogue flow do, you know, it, it has the three components of understanding, right? Enabling the conversation that's close to the human. So to do that, you have to be able to understand what that person is saying. You have to be able to talk or chat back to that person and have the interactions, right? So, you know, the components here that are leveraged are speech to text and text to speech. So dialogue flow in that regard is super powerful. Yes, you can build chatbots with it. You can also build voice bots on it. So, you know, that voice you hear when you call the bank and you're saying, you know, press one for accounts, press two for credit cards, that kind of bot you can also build very easily. And as William just showed in his demo, right, that can be leveraged in dialogue flow as well. But also the key thing is being able to look at the interactions and be able to analyze them to improve them, right? Because most chatbots you need to think about as a child, right? As they start they don't they understand certain things and they don't understand certain things you have to train them they have to learn and then as they learn more as they encounter more uh, words as they have different interactions they start to understand what the proper responses are without you training them without any additional um, nudging from from your teams and then they can actually fully be fully automated and that's when you start to get the full value out of them so being able to do that analysis um, not just on the conversations, but also, you know, the sentiment, right? Are the people happy? Are the people, is it a positive interaction? Is it a negative interaction? These are all things that are critical for ensuring good customer experience um, and good understanding of your customer behavior. When we talk about the understanding, Dialogflow is a really expansive tool, right? It has some of the most advanced neural networks um, that are available today. And I'm not the person to talk to you about deep neural networks. I have a very high level understanding of them. Um, but essentially, the same technologies in your Google Assistant, Alexa, these are the type of tool, uh, type of technologies that we're leveraging. Obviously, we're focused on Google Assistant type technologies here. Um, but yes, these are the tools that you can now embed into your applications, into your chat bots, into your voice bots with huge vocabularies. Um, allowing you to process customer interactions in real time. And this is really the super important aspect, again, for that you, good customer experience. You don't want customers waiting or you know, whole, having to get responses from you know, a bot 10, 15, 20 seconds later, because that's not natural. That's not how a, nat a person naturally responds. Um, but also, you know, these models and having this understanding, having the pre-built artificial intelligence there so you can just kind of plug and play and get going with some of these very simple use cases we really recommend using these because the bots have already been trained in certain ways and then as you get more uh, data as you get more customer interactions you can customize them even for even more to increase the accuracy of the speech of the intelligence all of those things super powerful in the understanding next is the talking right again google is a world leader in this talking obviously think about your google assistant right if you use the Google Assistant, you understand, and they understand the interactions that they're having, right? Google provides you with a, a, a wide set of voices that you could apply to your applications. It also allows you to use your own customized voices in certain cases if you have those. Um, and it has industry-leading technology in terms of different um, speech algorithms and speech voices that you can use that sound like real humans. And then finally, the interaction. Um, essentially, you know, this is the combination of all of the machine learning under the hood, um, the integration of the being able to talk between platforms, so being able to in, uh, connect to like a backend system, an order management system, a CRM system, right? Providing you with tools that allow you to, you know, move very quickly, iterate quickly. You know, one of our recommendations for customers is to always kind of, you know, have different phases of the bot. Focus on some very simple business cases and use cases in the beginning, deploy it, get the feedback, improve it, and then move to more advanced use cases. This is more an agile methodology that we use, uh, but we've seen it has great success for our customers. Um, and also, it's good for the development teams, it's good for, for everyone involved in the project to see the growth, to see the impacts that it has, and then scale out to other things. This is also an approach we use when we took a multilingual bot, for example. We generally start with one language, perfect that, and then we expand it to other languages. And our teams have really great experience doing that across a lot of Southeast Asian languages as well. 
as we go to things like contact center and looking at you know Twilio plus com, uh, Twilio plus dialog flow, at the heart of this is something called contact center AI. And that contact center AI has this conversational core, which essentially you can think of as an, an, an AI brain for your call center, right? It has several technologies within it that allow for power, AI powered conversations, you know, things that allow you to go off script, right? Essentially, these bots will learn, these cores will learn so that if your customer does bring you a new requirement or request something that's not programmed, it will be able to at least understand that it, you know, it needs to redirect to it, uh, a human to take that uh, inquiry. Or it logs that and then basically uses that as the next training phase, say, hey, Customer A asked me this. I didn't know what it was. We should, you know, train this and we should learn what this requirement is so that we can incorporate it into our workflow um, and allows you to fulfill to different systems as well. So your CRM, um, your ERP system, you know, different order management systems, you can fulfill to all of them simultaneously as well to really make sure that you're maximizing all of the different systems that your customers and your uh, staff can touch, but also then bringing more business value to them as well. And we found that this can really have significant return. Now, these are stats from Google, but you know, from our own experience with customers we work with in the region, these numbers are, are pretty accurate, right? You can see really dramatic decreases in handling time for support agents. You know, 30, 40% is not uncommon, right? Obviously, these are for larger contact centers, but we've worked with smaller, you know, contact center operations where you know 20% is is totally accept, is totally reasonable in terms of handling time decreasing. Which you know, imagine that it's you're basically being able to provide 20% more service, faster service to your customers. Um, it also helps with things like resolution times on support tickets, um, and then also containment, right? Like making sure that certain acts, certain uh, events don't spread out and impact other areas of your business or spread to other customers, things like that. So it has you know revenue enhancements, cost reductions, um, a lot of different value for the business side of it. And, and very, you know, very realistic returns that you can see, you know, over one, three, five year TCO periods as well. Um, so, you know, these are just some of the things that we've seen from customers in the field and some of the feedback we've had. Um, and what we'll do now is quickly go back now to, to William and he'll show you more kind of under the hood of what's happening in Dialogflow and see you. And so you can see how that plays with certain things like Twilio as well. So let me just mute my mic. Okay. Thanks, Mara. So yeah, so let's let's jump into that architecture again. I'm just going to present my screen, and let's tell, let's continue that story of our company that has the um, cake business and the food delivery business. So let's just let's just see how Twilio. We're talking about context sensor AI, right? We're talking about the two components. One is that dialogue flow chatbot, which you really can automate a lot of that virtual agent role and can connect to your backend systems. But also, Twilio is still kind of in the loop with this. For example, say our, say our, um, our, our chatbot might have an, agent, uh, have an agent handover. And that might be uh, an experience that actually having in line. So let's just jump into the scenario. Let's say, um, let's say that instead of calling through the telephone, let's say our person is gonna interact with uh, our business through line. Right. So, so one thing to show you how easy that is to set up in this Twilio component using um, Line as a channel manager, and then we'll go right into that dialogue flow. We'll, we'll dig deep into dialogue flow, and we'll show you how some of that behind the scenes NLP works. So, if I jump into another um, Twilio screen, um, what I want to show you is the idea of um, imagine that we're now instead of calling into the cake business we're gonna chat into the cake business through the line account, right? So this, this time we're gonna just use a, a voice bot, I mean, a, a chat bot that can identify which topics I'm gonna to route to, right? So the way we can do this in Twilio, and I will share this again, I will go over to the, uh, the Twilio screen, and I'm just gonna jump into Twilio Flex. Now, inside of Twilio, I've set myself up as a virtual agent that's gonna receive these texts. So the idea here is I can set myself as offline, available, unavailable, on a break. So imagine I'm one of the staff who, who can actually be managing the routed traffic to, from the line account right on my, on, my, uh, on my own cell phone. You can be working very, you know, it could be a large business or it could be a local business. So if I just go into my, I will get, go into my actual phone here. 
and I will go into our line account that I'm gonna interact with. So we've created like a demo, well, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a demo line account here. And what I'll do is I'm going to chat with the Twilio chatbot, and at the same time, you can see on the screen when the chat comes through. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in a chat, I'm gonna say, hi, I would like to order a cake. So this just might be you're in a public line group that, that somebody sends, right? And then if you notice here, I'm the active agent, so I'm sitting waiting for some chats to come in. And because I've put myself as available, that chat that I've sent out, so you, if you guys can see here, I've got a chat that's sent. And on my phone it says, we've received your request. Please wait while our agent is assigned to your case. Meanwhile, you can see in Twilio, I've got an incoming chat request that I can click on it. So I click on this incoming chat request. Oops, I have to go to the other tab. I will click on my incoming chat request. And now you see that I've got a virtual kind of line account here. I will engage this. So now I'm connecting as a employee of the cake company. And you can see my chat here for me. It says, hi, I'd like to order a cake. And I can chat back and say, um, you know, which, you know, you know, uh, what cake would you like to order, for example? And that will come back to my, my phone. And let's say I just, let's just say I just want to, maybe I send a picture of the cake, right? Maybe I'll just send, you know, a birthday cake. But you can actually send photos, images across. So you see I've sent, I've sent this uh, sticker here. I want this cake, right? Maybe that's a picture of a cake from the menu. And I could say, okay, okay, let me, okay, your, your cake is on the way, right? Something like this, just for the demo. But you can see how you can have this at scale. So maybe you have 10 agents and literally working from their own line accounts. So it's a very powerful uh, router. But now let's say uh, we want to flip this story into a chatbot story. So maybe like we could start routing some of this uh, interaction with our clients without having an agent involved because really shouldn't this just be a menu which is a cake order maybe if it was a special decorated cake or a custom cake you can imagine like you know super cake maybe you want to talk to a real agent but for a normal cake just check off the menu and and, and that could be handled through a, a, a chat bot so this is where we kind of get into the into the power of dialogue from so let's switch up our company for for for, for this example and let's, let's just say in this case our business is we are uh, we've, we started a hotel reservation business, okay? And, and we want to start um, getting hotel reservations through our chat bot. And then only if we go to customer, uh, customer service, that would be a special handover. We're trying to get the bot to do, do most of the work. So what I'll do is, uh, what you're looking at right here is the back end of Dialogflow. And as Mario was telling you, Dialogflow is a place where you can create um, these intents, which are basically uh, questions and then you can take actions on those questions. And, and what I'll do is I'll walk through the quick demo and then we'll kind of go through what Dialogflow is doing behind the scenes to see how it really, how powerful it really is and how it uses natural language programming uh, to do this. So let's just say that I'm on a chatbot here and I'll just say hello to this chatbot. This is the hotel ordering chatbot, hello. And the chatbot will respond, hello, welcome to hotel reservation service. For your convenience, can you inform the service you want? I would uh, like to book a hotel. And the chatbot says, which province would you like uh, a, to reserve a room in? So I'm in Thailand, I'm, I'm, I want to book in Bangkok, so I'm just going to put Bangkok. And they said, uh, what day would you like to check in? I'll, I'll just say, um, I'll say March 15th, and I'd like to check out on March 16th. And this is, oh, sorry. Yeah, so sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so I'm basically chatting with the chat bot here. Uh, sorry, I was on the wrong window, but uh, basically I've said hello. I've, I've asked the chat bot which hotel, uh, they've asked me which hotel they want to book, and I said I'm going to book a hotel. I'm reserving it for Bangkok, and I've given my check-in dates. And then it says, do you want to have a single or a double bed? And I'll say a double bed. And then finally, it'll say, please enter your first name. My name is uh, John Smith. And uh, my, oh, I forgot my phone number. So, it also, so I'll put 08999999. 
and then I'll say, and please enter my email is john at john.com. And now it says, please check your information. Is everything correct? So I, so you see as a chat bot, it can even tell that I didn't answer all of the question correctly. And it's just looking, drilling down through that list of components. So it's, it's got my name, it's got my email, it's got my contact, it's got my uh, um, hotel location, what kind of bed, and my dates. You know, obviously this would be more robust if it was a real one. This is just sort of for the demo. And I say, uh, is, is that correct? And I'll say correct. And then it says, oh, we've made the reservation for you, thank you. So this is, I just want to show you a very simple chatbot because let's go behind the scenes now and see how we build these intents. And this is the real exciting part. So if you go in back to our dialog flow tab, um, you can see there's a number of intents here. We start the conversation, we've got a reserve room, we've got hotel info, customer info, confirm info, and then the success notification and then the thank you. So as we go into Dialogflow, you, you see this is a very simple flow that you can create. And these can get as complicated as you want. We call that conversation design. So when you work with GoPamelo, our conversation engineer will work with your use case and find you know, as many different types of um, intents that you need to finish your tasks. And we'll go through that. So first off, we see the start condition. And this is basically just the welcome. So the welcome, the welcome intent will say, you know, it can add some text here. And you see, this is what the agent is going to say. Hello, welcome to Hotel Reservation Service for your convenience. You can have a number of texts here. And you can have even some variations on those texts. So you can see that it's very much menu driven. And this will be used to co collect um, the initial interaction with the user. Now, say we had other services. Maybe you're reserving a room. Maybe you're renting a car, you know, like most of or flight. You can imagine that there's a, a flight conversation to the side here and a, a rent a car conversation here, but we're just in the reserve a room conversation. And so then we're going to talk, there's going to be some sentences around reserving the room and some sentences around reserving the hotel. These are different paths that you can go toward the conversation. So next we're going to ask about that hotel. And as you remembered, the questions that were asked were about which hotel you know, which branch hotel you want to book for, what was your date, what was your last date, and then there's also um, what's the uh, room rate, what kind of bed is there. We had a number of different components here for the, for the room style. What's happening in Dialogflow behind the scenes is Dialogflow can parse through your sentence and identify those key talking points. So in our case, it was a very simple chatbot, but as you get more advanced chatbots, Dialogflow can actually learn if you write oh, I'd like to book a hotel room, I'd like to book a room. Like say this was a, also a flight bot. How can I help you? You say, I need a room. Well, it's, it's not booking a hotel room. It, it learns, oh, he means room, he doesn't mean a flight. So it's like, okay, we're gonna send you over to the hotel chain, right? Um, next up with this is, as we start uh, integrating with your backend system, this is where the concept of fulfillment comes in. So with, with chatbot fulfillment, our agent can go back to your system and take a look at, hey, what's the availability? What are the prices? All of that information that's stored in your sales system, we can then send that back through the chatbot and we call that fulfillment. And if you go back to the architecture slide for, for, for a moment, um, you see as our dialogue flow handles the conversation, our fulfillment will go back to your backend system by API. And that could be a CRM system, it could be a sales system, it could be an inventory, a number of systems that you've got on, on, in your enterprise. And that's where we're going to look up the answers and bring them back to the chatbot. So the chatbot actually is just, the dialogue flow part is just the language recognition. The rest of it is integration pipes back into your APIs and backend systems. So let's go back to the chatbot again. Next will be the customer information. So again, we have a, a statement here about please enter your name, phone number, and email. And if you see this customer info, if we dig deep into that, there's also a number of components that that has to pick up. So for the customer components, that will include not just, uh, it'll be a variable in a way for the name, for the uh, contact information. So again, let's back out to the full chatbot. We can also register the customer now in our sales database. So now that we've got a sale, that could uptick our sale database. And this could, you can see how this, this use case 
can be applied for any kind of um, reservation or sale or order system. And it can even be applied for that cake order that we said before. Let's say our agents, we don't want our agents ordering cakes. We only want agents having to deal with custom cakes. So our chatbot can actually reserve, will collect information as, hey, do you want a custom cake or do you want to pick one of our menu cakes? The chatbot can probably finish that whole transaction just by going through a similar, similar system. But then say there's a problem halfway through it or, or say, hey, do you have any customizations or you'd like to talk to a customer agent? We could actually create a, a, a dialogue flow intent that will hand you back over to the to live agent. And if we go back to our outside slides, um, you can have that cloud dispatcher. Again, dialogue flow can route you back and talk to an agent again. So this becomes the full, full support contact center. And you can have your agent get the transcript of the dialogue flow chat. So as the chatbot collects all these informations for the customer, the agent can get a transcript of this. And again, those same, those same analytics cases um, apply with the dialogue flow work as well. You can start collecting um, where the conversation was successful, if there was any issues with the conversation. Uh, we, we had one funny example in the past before where we said, say you have a vegetarian pizza company, right? And many of your customers are asking for pepperoni pizzas that you don't have on the order. You might be able to say, hey, you know what? We get 500 orders every day looking for veg vegetarian pepperoni pizza. That could lead to product development, right? So by collecting these analytics from your chatbot, your AI can, can detect all of that log traffic and say, oh yeah, there's some, there's some interesting things here that your analytics team, team can take a look at. Plus the agent can have agent support where we'll say, hey, this customer has been waiting a long time. Uh, the customer seems like he's, he's annoyed and the agent can take appropriate action to help the customer out. And this makes customer satisfaction and agent satisfaction much better. Um, and I think, I think that's, a, that's a, pretty much the overview of it. Let me just switch back to um, the last. Component. Creating conversational experiences across. Yeah, I just wanna end it up saying that the chatbot handover is another key component of a CCAI. And I think that that's that agent assist, they call it in chat. And our, and our teams have had a lot of success, success with sharing that um, agent handover, dialogue flow development imp implementation, and then overall integration with your IVR systems with using Twilio. And I'll hand it back over to Mario for there. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> um, I just what I was just saying is we're almost at the top of the hour, and uh, I wanted to just you know go through a couple of customer success stories, but also give you guys some time if you have any questions um, to to ask us, and you know have a, a conversation towards the end of the call. So um, you know first we'll just go into some success stories, and these are projects that actually you know I've worked with, and, and William and I have both worked on personally, so we have a really good insight onto them. Um, the first one is you know a customer here in Thailand called Kung Thai Credit Card. Um, we've helped them recently to modernize their customer engagement and their call their call center by leveraging dialogue flow and the call center uh, contact center artificial intelligence. Uh, what we did was you know help them to you know take their existing solution, integrate it with their call center, and then embed contact center AI and dialogue flow to handle not just their chat and in chat inbound inquiries but also their voice inbound. And what this really does is helps them to have um, reduced call center loads and so helps them help their actual call center agents focus on you know the high quality the high value kind of requests that are coming in making sure that you know anything priority is getting routed to the right person um, it also helps to provide a seamless handover so basically if someone's engaging their chat agent or their voice agent there's really no there's no difference between that from the customer perspective. From there, they just see you know one seamless transition and responses to their inquiries, and also gives them uh, you know a really good experience because you know they're using a lot of the natural um, voice technologies available from Google to provide not just English language but Thai language support, which is really good and shows the, the power of that and providing good Thai language support as well as other uh, Southeast Asian languages as well. 
The next one is um, the AIA Investor Relations web bot. So this is one that's actually, if you go to the AIA website, Investor Relations website, there's a chat icon there. You can click on that bot, and that is our bot that we built for AIA. Um, you know, they had a challenge where their their investment relations agents were getting a lot of inbound inquiries for customers asking for, you know, kind of FAQ type information. And while their agents were happy to respond to that, it wasn't really things that were adding value to the business and helping to increase revenue. Um, and it was making it hard for those agents to, you know, prioritize their task of, you know, helping provide other services to their investors, but also then giving the right information to customers. So what we were able to do is implement this bot and deploy it onto their website. Um, and then basically it's a, it's a chat bot using Dialogflow. And basically it's, it responds to customer inquiries and it provides a lot of valuable information to investors. You know, things like when is the next, uh, when is the next quarterly meeting? Uh, when are the quarterly results uh, published? Uh, where can I find specific information? Things like this. So it gave the AIA investors, um, it saves them a lot of time from the agent perspective, but also still provides good value to their customers because they can quickly go and they know exactly where to go find that information in a very uh, quick time amount of time. This is just another view of it. As you can see, this is, a, as I mentioned, it's live on their website now and you can just see kind of how it works. Um, it's kind of a menu driven chat bot, which is what the customer wanted, but also what the feedback from their customer was, hey, look, we just want to be able to quickly drill down into some of these areas, right, and get the information we need. Um, so, you know, very helpful for them in terms of that. Some other information or some other customer references, you know, uh, from Twilio side is SingLife. So it's, with SingLife, they were able to leverage some of those messaging uh, services on Twilio to provide a, a customized platform on WhatsApp, right? So it allows their, um, their officers to effectively communicate with the customers on WhatsApp or their preferred channel um, and allows them to, you know, get messages faster, um, offer insights faster, things like that. So super powerful them in their customer service goals. Another one is ING. So ING is actually now um, a call center contact and contact center customer of Twilio, um, basically allowing them to set up a cloud contact center that integrates live video, um, chat, as well as voice calls. For, for ING customers. Um, it's now expanding across Europe um, and it has a really powerful impact on them because they can scale it. And you know, the other powerful thing is that they don't actually necessarily have to have people in a call center, a traditional call center. These agents can be online at home, you know, doing, you know, in different areas because as long as they have a laptop, as long as they have a headset, they can effectively respond to customer inquiries and tickets and make sure that they have, um, you know, the right information and scaling and providing good service. Um, so it gives them lower cost, com higher consumer conversion, and also higher customer satisfaction as well. Um, so the requirements, you know, basically to summarize, we're looking at how to, um, you know, give the best to our customers, right? And our mission is to help you get the most out of Google Cloud. So, um, you know, just to, before we end things over and maybe hand over to a little Q&A, just want to highlight, you know, how you can work with us and then kind of a call to action for you guys. Um, you know, as I mentioned, right, we provide a, a service methodology based on four pillars, assessing your requirements, um, building out the foundations that you'll need to be successful, launching the services, and then moving you to a managed service model. Now, this is something that we found effective, things that we've learned from our different cloud partnerships like Google, um, and it's really effective to help you start on your cloud journey, your natural language processing journey, your chatbot journey, whatever it might be. Um, there is also the availability of something what we call the partner services fund. So Google has this really great program where they allow us and you know and allow customers like yourselves the ability to pilot or to do POCs on Google Cloud Platform with the potential of up to $65,000 of funding. Obviously there is some qualification around that and we're happy to talk to you about that you know, uh, as a follow-up. But essentially it's a really great way with no financial commitment from you uh, to be able to start to test some of these technologies